Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. The first relation we're going to talk about is called dominance. This is the up-down relationship in, in trees. It's the one that's connected via the uh, branch arrow, the branch lines. So intuitively, dominance is a kind of containment. If in one node contains another, then it dominates it. So if we look at this abstract tree here, we can see that A, B, and C, A, um, sorry, dominates B, C, and D, and it also dominates E, F, and G. So A contains all of those nodes. It becomes a lot more uh, clear if you look at a bracketed diagram for this same tree structure. And you'll see that the containment relationship is clearly indicated by the brackets, where B, C, uh, D, E, F, and G are all contained within the brackets marked A. Um, notice that this distance is both local and um, of long distance. So for example, A dominates D, and as a consequence, A also dominates F, G, and E. Another way to think about this is on top of. So within the tree structure, if some node is on top of a branch that connects to another node, then it dominates it. Um, here's a more technical definition. Um, technically, by the way, this is the definition of what's called proper dominance. Uh, we're not going to worry about the difference between proper dominance and simple dominance in this class because they, um, they amount to the same thing most of the time for linguistic um, study. Uh, you can read a book uh, like Kearney uh, 2011's Constituent Structure, where I discuss more carefully the difference between proper domination and simple domination. Anyway, here's dominate, or, or more correctly, properly dominate. Uh, here, node A dominates node B if and only if A is higher up in the tree than B, and you can trace a line from A to B going only downwards. One important point here, I'm just going to go back to this tree, the node that dominates has the lines underneath it, and the nodes that are, are dominated have the lines on top of them. This is um, an important thing about tree drawing. You want to avoid having your lines come out of the sides of categories or into the sides of categories, because then the domination definition fails. So here you'll note that all of my lines are drawn such that uh, the, the category that dominates is literally on top of those lines. Um, it, those lines come straight out from the bottom of it. And the lines that are dominant, the nodes that are dominated, like B C, and B, C, and D, have the lines coming to the top of them, not the side of them. OK, let's talk about a couple of other kinds of domination or dominance. Um, first of all, we want to talk about exhaustive dominance. Now this is a tricky definition, because exhaustive dominance is about sets of terminal nodes. Remember, those are the nodes at the bottom of the tree. First of all, it's sets, so you have to look at the all the members of the set, and it's only ever terminal nodes. It's never non-terminal nodes. So effectively, uh, a node exhaustively dominates a set of nodes, provided it dominates all the members of that set, so there's no members of the set that are not dominated by A, and there's also no terminal node that's dominated by A that's not a member of the set. The reason this is important is because this is going to give us a definition for constituent. We're going to use domination to describe what items form constituents, and exhaustive domination is what gives us this. So let's look at an example here. We want to see what nodes A exhaustively dominates. 
it exhaustively dominates a set of terminals. So we're only looking at the bottom line, and we're looking at the set B, C, D, and E. And we see that A dominates all the members of that set, B, C, D, and E, and there's no things dominated by A that are not in that set. So B, C, D, and E are exhaustively dominated by A, and thus form a constituent. Contrast that with the set B, C, and D. B, C, and D is not exhaustively dominated by A, right? Um, because A also dominates E. And uh, all members, uh, all the things dominated by A must be in the set of the exhaustive domination. Similarly, um, A does not exhaustively dominate the set B, C, D, E, and H because H is not dominated by A. So, there can, so it, it, the condition is that the set of nodes that are exhaustively dominated be the entire set of nodes dominated by um, the dominator and um, that, that there can be no things in that set that aren't dominated by it. This gives us the definition of constituency. A constituent is a set of nodes exhaustively dominated by a single node. More particularly, that should actually be terminal nodes. So we see that B, C, D, and E here form a constituent, which is the constituent labeled A. H and I also form a constituent. They're exhaustively dominated by G. Here's a, and, and by the way, all, um, a, B, C, D, E, H, and I form a constituent. That's the one dominated by F. Here's a question for you. Are A and G a constituent? It's a trick question because A and G are not terminal nodes. Exhaustive domination only works over terminal nodes. So although A and G together come together to form F, they do not form a terminal. They do not form a constituent. The constituent is B, C, D, E, H, and I. All right. Here's a little more terminology. This one is a little tricky. Constituent of is not the same thing as constituent. So a constituent is an exhaustive domination relationship. But when linguists talk about constituents of, what they're really meaning is the opposite of domination or dominance. So if A dominates B, then the reverse of that is B is a constituent of A. This is a really tricky uh, terminological point. So constituents are defined over exhaustive domination, and constituent of is the opposite of domination. All right, immediate dominance is another kind of dominance that we want to talk about. Immediate dominance is local dominance. So it's where there's only effectively one line between the two nodes and not multiple lines. Um, the technical definition of this is A immediately dominates B if there's no intervening node G, which is dominated by A but dominates B. So in other words, if you want to think about it, A is the first node above B. There's only one line. So if we look here, the nodes um, that C dominates are uh, D, E, and F, H, I, and J, all of those. But it only immediately dominates D, E, and F, because those are the only ones where there's just one line between that item and the dominator. Similarly, F immediately dominates H, I, and J. So this is a more restrictive kind of domination. Domination is very general and goes across the whole tree. Immediate domination is in these local little trees with only one layer of lines. Here's some few more informal terms we use. Um, another way of expressing immediate domination is to refer to the genealogical terms mother and, uh, mother and daughter. So mother is a node that immediately dominates another, and daughter 
is a node that it is immediately dominated by another, so mother and daughter. Um, another way of putting this about daughters is it's an immediate constituent of. So remember, constituent of is the reverse of domination, and immediate constituent of is the reverse of immediate domination. Um, sisters are nodes that share the same mother. So sisterhood, which we talked about um, before in the unit on tree drawing, where we cared about um, uh, modification relationships, can be, can be defined clearly here. It's two nodes that are both immediately dominated by a single node. Now, this actually allows us to define root and terminal nodes. So a root node is a node with no mother, and a terminal node is a node with no daughters. So in this sentence, um, the, plat the platypus laughed, the root node is the TP, and the terminal nodes are D, N, and V. This is the reason, in fact, that we don't want to have a line between the, the um, category and the word itself, uh, because that would screw up this definition the, N, the D, N, and V would no longer be terminals. Only the words themselves would be terminals. So that's why we omit the line between the determiner and the word itself. So there's no line between D and the, between N and platypus, and V and laughed, because that would screw up this definition. 